okay, all right, kids. Time for Uncle Jackula to tell you a story. The old cow's going to tell you a tale. And it is called What I Did When Asmodeus Appeared to Me. <laughs> so, this story does involve Yogi. So, you may, re- may remember a, um, a few months, about a month ago, month and a half, um, Yogi was like, oh man, you got to listen to this interview with Alan Moore where he talks about meeting Asmodeus. And I'm like, oh shit, yeah, fuck yeah, I do. So instead of going to bed after the stream, I listened to it. And it's a very long interview. I played a little of it for you earlier. Um, but we didn't get to the Asmodeus part. But in that interview, he's talking about how, like, yeah, he decided he was going to be a magician at 40. You know, instead of having a regular midlife crisis, I was going to go around and tell everyone that I was a magician. And you've got to be careful when you do things like that, because one day you'll wake up and realize that is exactly what you are. And, you know, he's, he's talking about this ritual that he did with his soon-to-be wife. Um, and it fails. The ritual fails. They're trying to summon something. He's, like, invoking Glycon. He's doing everything. He's, he's Alan Mooring as hard as he can. <laughs> and nothing happens. It's a big gathering of his friends. Nothing happens. He goes up to his bed sulks and you you know he sulks he's like I'm a fraud I don't know what I'm doing I've gone utterly mad and I'm a complete and utter failure which and and then he says the best thing ever which was very unlike me but he realizes he, he has this feeling he's like wait he's thought I'm not thinking this Something's thinking this for me. I think maybe it's a demon. And all of a sudden, like his he, uh, you know, like he starts like shaking and like holding on to the bed and like convulsing. And he has this this image of this immense mental fight between it. This is all going somewhere. Um, mental fight between him and whatever this thing is, and then he calms down. And his wife comes into the room, his um, fiance comes into the room to say, Alan, what was that? He's like, did you, did you notice something? He's like, we did. But it seems to be gone away. And he's like, it's not gone away, but it's far enough away that it can't do us any more harm. I think it was a demon. And she's like, what makes you think that? And they go back and forth for a little bit. And then all of a sudden, as they're talking, Alan's like, and I hear this voice. And it goes, do you know who I am? He's like, all right, I didn't think that. (laughs) Something's talking to me. I, all right, I remembered something about... I, 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 I stop B. Are you he I'm like, who are you? It's like, guess. Is it Belial? No. Is it Beelzebub? No. Is it Asmo Day? Yes. And of course, Asmode is one of the names of Osmodius. Now, here's where I enter the story. I'm hearing this, and I'm like, oh, this is really cool. And then he goes into his encounter with Asmode, and he desc- and, and the guy goes, what did he do? He was like, I asked if I could see him, see what he looked. And did he? He did. And what did it look like, Alan? And he goes, it was a pink and purple latticework of lizards that made... And at that point, like, I freak. I freak out. Because every time I get 
really out there. The image that I have and that I have always had is of a lizard lattice work. And more important than that, I don't just see it. I am part of it. I am part of this reptilian lizard-like lattice work of constant yearning, constant calling, and constant coupling. So I hear this description and I freak the fuck out. Because if any of that is real, not only have I also seen it, I'm part of it. I'm part of Osmodius. And I'm like, I finished the interview and I'm just sitting there going like, how is that possible? How is, what, what the fuck is going on? Like, I'm freaking out, man. Then I hear the voice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, oh my God. It's like, oh my God, is this happening? And then you hear like, yes. And I'm like, oh shit. It's like fucking Pawnee Pool. Now I've got it. Okay. Um, <laughs> what, you know, who, you know, who are you? And it's basically like, you already know. And I'm like, okay, so it's, it's Osmodeus. It's like, yes. And I'm like, oh God, what does it mean? And he's like, I know what it means. You're a piece of me and you've been taken from me. And I want you back you know and i'm just sitting there like oh fuck oh fuck <laughs> and this is the moment and and i'm like like and i'm wide awake by the way i am wide awake and i'm trembling and i'm like they're like getting close to crying and i'm like oh god what do i do i've either gone completely fucking insane or there's a demon after me Neither one is good. Neither one is good. So I got to do something. These are both bad options. And I have got to find my way out of this fast. And I immediately thought of what happened on another trip, um, which was the vision of the quote unquote spiritual money mother as a witch who looked like Rowena from Supernatural. You spoke in a British uh, uh, Irish accent, you know, and called me her wicked boy. Um, and I remember something that I had heard on that trip, which is don't believe what they say about your father. He has, he will always protect you and he has always protected you. And as a matter of fact, there's probably going to have to be a point where you got to tell him not. And I immediately at this moment where it's like, I'm going to take and he's, this, this thing is describing all these horrible things it's going to do to me. You know, in order to get me back, and they're just horrific. And all of a sudden, I just think very loudly in my own head, you cannot touch me. I am the son of Baphomet. Immediately. Immediately. The, the, the image is of this, like, he, this demonic entity, like, looking at this little, little thing. And all of a sudden, it's just being unable to be touched. It's like, oh. And immediately, there's that, <laughs> the voice is like, fuck. Yeah, he doesn't. All right. Uh, that's, the, the, you know, that, that's the thing about, uh, that's the thing about uh, uh, Asmodeus. As, as the demon of, of knowledge and uh, visual exposure, he doesn't like to be outwitted. <laughs> Yeah, 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 because he, because um, Baphomet is an alchemist, you he's know, the alchemist. He, he's the alchemist, you know, you know, he has the mastery of all material reality. And um, I, I say this, I have this vision, he's like, fuck, all right, fine, <laughs> fine. You know, and I, I ask him a bunch of questions. Uh, probably the most pertinent is what happened. Like, how am I a part of you? And he's like, Baphomet took a piece of me out and gave it to Tawusi. And I'm like, 
okay, that's that's yes. a fucking weird amalgamation of ideas right there. <laughs> um, all right, and, and and around this point, like in this experience, like Baphomet shows up. He is behind me, and he is like, all right, that's enough of that. Yeah, Osmodes, you can just you just stay where you are. I'm gonna. I'm going to talk to the child now. And there's nothing you can do about it. And you know there's nothing you can do about it. Menace us all you want. It doesn't matter. Um, and we have a little conversation. It's like, is that true? Is, is, is what he said true? And Baphomet's like, yes, I plucked you out. I plucked out a, a piece of Osmodius and gave it to... Um, your mother and father. And I'm like, why? He remained silent. And I'm like, why? He remained silent. And I'm like, okay. And we sit, sit there in slight awkwardness for a while. And then he goes, would you like to meet your father? You know, and I'm like, I thought, you were my father. And he goes, yes and no. You are my son, but you are his child. Which I thought was a really weird distinction. <laughs> I figured out what it meant a bit later. So, you know, at this moment, you know, the vision shifts and King Peacock appears. And he is very happy to see me. He is very loving. He's very excited. Very excited. Like, finally, finally. Like, you know, you've seen me. You finally saw me. And I'm like, I, I did. I did. I, I have finally seen you. Like, what, what's, what's going on? Oh, none of that matters. None of that matters. What matters is that you've seen, you've seen me, you've seen, and, and, and now you can, you can see yourself. This is wonderful. This is, well, uh, oh, this is what I, we've, we've waited for. Well, who's waited? Well, me and your mother. Who's, who's, who's mother? He's like, would you like to meet her? And I'm like, yes, yes, I would. Yes, I would. Up we go, you know, into the whatever relative up is in this context. And there is a temple made of light um, is the best way to describe it. It's not actually made of light. This is the best way to describe it. And he's like, go on in. And I'm like, aren't you coming with me? And he's like, no, you need to meet her by yourself. You need to be by yourself when you first meet her. And I'm like, okay. So I walk in, and inside this temple is a woman. Uh, she's like a giant. She's like, you know, like 20 feet tall. You know, and she's sitting in a lotus position. She has multiple arms, and she radiates white light. Just, just to the point where I can't see her face. And I'm like, and, and I ask her, like, is that you? And she's like, it is. It is. How are you? And I'm like, and, and I cry. You know, I cry because like, this is a, this is a big, this is a big deal. You know, like, this is a big deal to me. Like, I'm, I'm like kind of weeping and shaking and all that stuff. And then, um, um, she just lets me do that, and I go like, I've, I've, you know, I've missed you so much. Like, why, why could I never find you? And it's like because bad things happen. You know, it's one of those. It's like, you know, why did, why was it, why did everything suck so bad? It's like because bad things happen. They're not, they weren't meant to. They just happen. But you've made it here. My little Tawuzi. I'm like, she called me her little Tawuzi. And I'm like, okay. 
See, and, and about this time, I'm like, whoa, I am getting really arrogant up in my own mind here. You know, <laughs> like this is this is crazy. Um, but, but I stay the, there. But that's the power of her love, though. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. And so, you know, we're, we're we go, you know, I, I I'm done with that. I come back down, you know, back down to earth as it were. And I contemplate this whole experience, this whole experience I'm contemplating. I'm like, that was weird. Like to have an experience like that in the waking world, not on drugs is really super unusual. Like that's like, I'm like, that's a vision. Like, that's the kind of vision that usually, like, you know, like, like, prophecy is made from. Like, that kind of shit. Now, maybe oh, yeah. not that kind of stuff exactly, but, like, approaching that space. And I'm like, good God, what the fuck just happened? Oh, it was another part of it. And I forgot about this. Um, before um, meeting Tawuzi, actually, I had forgotten. Baphomet says, do you want to be the shadow? And I'm like, I do. And he's like, all right. And he leaves me on a plateau, a, pla a black plateau filled with darkness and emerging out of the rock is this white gelatinous mass that is moaning in pain. And I'm just like, okay, I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting, like, you know, something that looked like me, but, like, you know, was red or had smoke coming out of its eyes or something. You know, no. This is, this is a visualization. This is obviously very important because I wasn't expecting this at all. Um, and it sometimes had an old man's face, and sometimes it had no face at all. And I said the only thing I could think of saying at the time, you know, which was... You're very strong. This seems to soothe it slightly. Not a lot. But it's apparently enough for it to recognize who I am. And I had the sensation of saying this as a little child. Mm. Um, and I'm just sort of like, okay, this is, this is all weird. So that, that, was a, that was another aspect that had happened before going up to the meeting King Peacock going into the temple of life, meeting the, uh, the spiritual mother whose name I do not know, but I kind of, ref without, because I don't know her name, I just refer to her as the mother of whores. <laughs> you know, the great whore Babylon, maybe. You know, like... Um, may, may I ask a question? Sure. Um, okay. So, on your way in, when he mm -hmm. says to you, like, oh, no, no, you, you have to go in and see her yourself. Mm -hmm. So as you're walking into the temple, into what I'm assuming is the inner chamber where she is, mm -hmm. just out of curiosity, on either side of you, do you have the sensation, would you say that you have the sensation of perceiving that there are what seems to be white marble columns, but you're not quite sure if they're there or not because it's so brilliantly bright that you can't tell if they're actually physically there. Yes. Okay. I know where you were. Oh, uh, I've been there. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. 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 You, you, basically you, you don't know specifically what it's called. You've just been there yourself. I mean, I know that I ha I know that we have words for it, but I also know that's not what it's really called. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I I've okay. been in that space. I've met her. She's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I I find it very interesting that I find it very interesting that that she's nameless. Well. Like, that was really curious, because I kept asking, what's your name? And it, it was basically, like, there was no answer. Well, because that's the thing about it. Like, it doesn't really... Okay, if this makes any sense. It, mm -hmm. do, it doesn't matter what her name is so much as there's one thing that she wants us to call her. 
Yeah. And that's and that's mother. That's all she wants. <laughs> I'm an idiot. I didn't put that together. <laughs> didn't put that together. You're right. Oh. Man. Ah. Got it. No. Yeah. That's all she really, you know, cuz but that's the thing about it though. It's like all she wants to hear from you is you're my mother. I love you. Oh, it's half right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's all she wants. <laughs> yeah, but I've never, I never had like uh, an experience like that with a, um, you know, with with a, a, a feminine force. Hmm. You know, super profound, super weird. You know, but very, very um, familiar. You know, you have all those contradictory feelings at once. So after after all that, I I I come back down, and um, after I come back down, there is uh, there's Asmodeus waiting, just kind of like annoyed, irritated. Just, yeah, yeah, he's, he's irritated, and I was like, why are you? Why is he irritated? You know, and it's like it's because you can't touch me, isn't it? He's like, oh, there are other ways. There are always other ways. I'm like, son of Baphomet. He's like, oh god, it's not gonna work forever, you know. And I'm like, and I'm like, then I'll have to learn another trick. And I did. I did learn another trick, and the trick escalates. It's like, for example, like I was, I was walking around. Um, I've been slowly building this altar, um, which I, I have yet to assemble, but I'm getting all the pieces up. Um, and one of the, the, the images I had was I'm walking around San Francisco and I'm gathering stuff up for the altar and I'm like, Jesus Christ, I'm going completely fucking off my rocker. And one of the, you know, the, the voice of Baphomet shows up again. It's like, all right, you'll need this, 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 and this. I can tell you what they are. Like, he gives me a list of shit. And I'm like, okay, I know, I know what each of these is, so I have to get them. Got it. And, and I'm like, so what do we do about Asmodeus in the meantime? And uh, he's like, well, I'm going to have to refer to you to refer you to your father all right so P king peacock of me emerges again and i'm like all right dad i got asmodeus on my ass he can't hurt me but i'm afraid that him being able to spy on me whenever he wants is going to be a problem and he's like oh yeah yeah it's totally gonna be and i'm like okay well what do i do he's like well i'll teach you one trick and the trick is to envision myself covered in a dome of peacock feathers and i'm like okay i'll do that okay why does that work and he's like ah you know because the one thing that you know the penetrative gaze can't stand is the penetrating gaze reflected upon it mm -hmm. you know it's like it, you know the peak the peacock it, the peacock is full of eyes its feathers are full of eyes and it's like, oh, like can't even look at it, you know? And I'm like, well, won't he give up? Won't he muster the will and break through? He's like, no, it's not about will. It's not about will. You, you can't understand what it's not about will. He literally can't do it. And I'm like, ooh, that's interesting. He's like, yeah, won't work forever. He'll figure something else out. And on another night, I'm sitting there and it's the like, aha, I've got in. And I'm like, oh shit, what do I do? And this was the most egotistical thing ever. <laughs> Here is where my fucking ego reaches heights unfucking imaginable. So there we are. We're on the Black Plateau. I'm facing off against Osmodius. I'm a bit larger in comparison, but of course, he's Osmodius. He's very powerful. You know, 
He's a demon written about for hundreds of thousands of years. You know, obviously knows a thing or two about a thing or two. And he's like, all right, you know, like it's on. Grabs me and I disappear. He's like, okay, wasn't ex- he's, like, there's a moment where he's like, I wasn't quite expecting that. He's like, okay, where are you? Now, one of the things you have to understand about Osmodius is that he has Peacock's tail. In the lore, he has Peacock's tail. And Alan Moore also talks about this. In fact, why don't I bring up the drawing that Alan Moore did of his vision of Osmodius. And the way Alan Moore describes this is, imagine what a fourth dimensional being would look like to us on the third. It looked like it was coming at us from all directions. This is Osmodius. So, I'm facing off against something that's made up of shit like that. Euclidean geometry, what the fuck does that mean? Yeah, 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 what does that mean? How is that a thing that lives? Um, and all of a sudden, you know, I disappear, and he's like, ah, oh, shit, he's done something. What is it? And then all of a sudden, the image is all of his peacock eyes going like, ha I'm back in. He's like, wait, what do you mean you're back in? I'm part of you. I'm back in. And, you know, and he's like, wait, isn't that what I wanted? No, it's not what, not what you wanted, because not only am I inside you, Pull back, full non-Euclidean geometry, Doctor Strange moment. Now I'm gigantic and he's in my hand. And I am like, I am also outside of you! (laughs) And so we're running around like this fucking insane psychedelic space, moving through images of peacocks. You know, to the point where he's just like, all right, fine, you win this round. And so that was <laughs> me dealing with Osmodius so far. It will probably be another chapter <laughs> at some point. Uh, he really fucking hates it when, when he really fucking hates it when human beings out with him, though. He really can't stand it. Yeah, yeah, it's really irritating. I don't, I don't blame him, but like, hey, let's be fair. He threatened me first. First. Well, but but that's the thing. This is what this is what differentiates like the archetypal demon from the archetypal angel. The archetypal demon gets you know gets too haughty for his own good, and he you know he um he literally starts to like see other things as below him, regardless of their potential. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the, one of the classic like, you know, classic uh, forms of oversight. And, uh, yeah, but I still think it's really strange. The, the one thing that I have yet to truly figure out, oh, the son of Baphomet. I figured out what that meant. Mm. Um, because it was, it was son. It wasn't child. It wasn't progeny of. It was specifically son. And I realized it's not just, it's not just son, S-O-N, it's S-U-N. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Baphomet is the alchemist, so he has the Philosopher's Stone, which was representative of the soul. So if you say, so if, you know, if you say, I am the son of Baphomet, like what you're basically saying is, I have a soul, this is my soul, fuck you. You can't come in. You know, you can't come in. You know, because I am denying you entrance. You are not invited inside. You know, I would uh, I would like to declare here before the entire slut pit and before the Internet. Behold, this is the man, Jack Shen, who has called himself Jackula, who has become the Solus Invictus. All hail the realization. <laughs> and I've come to a, a definition of magic that I'm enjoying at the moment, mm-hmm. which is it is the attempt to change reality at the perceptual and probabilistic level. Sounds right. You have all these little mechanisms in your in your head, and you don't necessarily you're not necessarily conscious about everything that they do, 
because if you did, you wouldn't do anything. You'd be paralyzed by indecision. And so the brain just does it automatically for you. But sometimes you got a clean house. Hell, my entire experience that I just described to you could be very easily summed up in, Jack has got mom and dad issues. <laughs> you know, like, you know, <laughs> Count Dracula works out his fucking emotional issues with his parents live on the internet. Fuck it's you, Dr. Phil. Nice. This is the real shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck you, Dr. Phil. Phil, this is the real yeah. shit. <laughs> Yeah, let's uh, yeah, let's get let's, let's get Jungian up in this bitch. Um, <laughs> Your Freudian ass, fuck off. Yeah, fuck off. <laughs> you know, like like Alan Moore has said that like consciousness is a problem for material science. It is mm. okay. What is the one study of, or area that kind of forms the bridge between materialistic science and magic and spiritualism? That's psychology. Yeah, because mm. it, it does have that, it has that issue, which is, well, how do you prove these things? It's like, well, we're working on it. It's like, you experience them, you fuck with. Yeah, 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 you experience <laughs> them, and, you know, it, it's one of those, you can't doubt your own experience. You can doubt whether it's happening in the material world, but you can't doubt the experience itself. It doesn't work that way. You know, you can doubt whether it's real, but you don't doubt the experience. 